Um, hey folks, so I guess I'll uh, start with the session. Um, this is my very first uh, KubeCon talk, and um, so I welcome you uh, to my first talk, and a very chill evening, I must say. <laughs> so um, we'll be talking about the positive sides of finding pods, uh, which is also a toolkit for uh, app life, life cycle. Now, initially, uh, this was a duo talk, but uh, it got converted into single because um, Adam uh, couldn't make it due to some reasons which are out of his hand. So uh, let me just quickly, you know, uh, tell me about uh, myself here. So I am a Kubernetes and Cloud Native Associate, uh, that is KCNA certified. Um, I'm a captain contributor, um, also an open source developer. Um, I have worked as a program manager uh, in NCMA software and as a junior developer evangelist in, in Merico. And I love taking part in communities, uh, you know, uh, and uh, attending events, um, any sort of technical events. And also, I believe in uh, power of uh, collaboration. So, and uh, as for the introduction of Adam, um, Adam is a developer at Dynatrace. So, Captain uh, is a project which is by Dynatrace, and he's again a Captain contributor and also an open source advocate. So these are our socials, Twitter and LinkedIn, in case uh, you, know, you want to have chat around this session or uh, you know, anything in or around DevOps, uh, I would be really happy to uh, you know, have a chat with you. So now uh, moving on to the agenda. So we will start with pending pods. So what are pending pods? Um, you know, what are, why are they so common in Kubernetes and uh, all the uh, other areas? Then we'll see how our uh, you know, pending pods beneficial. You, this is the like heart of our uh, talk because um, not uh, in you know in not in daily uh, uh, use case or in, in daily uh, application deployments you see that uh, you know pending pods are beneficial for developers. They are always a uh, threat to them, but uh, we'll see how can they be you know beneficial for uh, few developers. Then we'll see the problem indications. You know when is the right time to you know, get aware of uh, the pending pod problem. Let, let's say they might be a huge, uh, you know, threat to your application. So you have to be, uh, you know, knowing of, uh, like, what's the error which is, uh, let, let's say, causing uh, the pending of the pods. Then we'll uh, see our, uh, we'll see Captain in, in the open source tool and we'll see how we can utilize it in, utilize it in order to, uh, you know, make uh, the pending pods more uh, helpful to us. Then we'll see the demo. So I have a partially recorded demo here because uh, this initially this talk was of uh, one hour, but uh, at the end moment we have to change it to half an hour. So it was a pretty long demo. I have some half part of it recorded and half part, and then, then I will continue the live part from uh, the recorded part, uh, recorded section. And then we'll uh, conclude the session. So uh, let's start with uh, you know, what are pending parts in the first place, right? So um, pending pods are uh, like they are nothing in but in Kubernetes but a pod that let's say have been created at, but not yet been scheduled to a node, right? So let's say let let me give you a quick quick example of this. Uh, you have an application, right? You have all your YAML com configurations written. You have all the files created, all the you know uh, all the de uh, deployment and all the files are ready for you. You hit the command kubectl apply minus m in the particular file name, you see that your terminal shows you that the pod is created, but uh, you you don't you see that your application is still not running. So then uh, you debug it a lot. You go to kubectl get pods, you see that, uh, okay, the pods are created, but again, they are in pending state. So all these pods which are, you know, created but are not scheduled to note and because of whom the application is not running are pending pods. So, now, why are pending pods, uh, you know, they are uh, like so common in, in Kubernetes? Um, so we have uh, you know, s some overview of uh, some, let's say, common errors, uh, which might cause pending pods uh, for your application. So the broader ones are um, insufficient resources, um, node and scheduling constraints, networking and image pool delays. So let me quickly, you know, brief you about uh, all of these, and uh, we'll 
understand uh, you know uh, each one of them so the first one is insufficient resource um, now pods are scheduled to nodes uh, by kubernetes uh, you know according to the resource request so let's say there there is a deployment made by you there is a resource need which uh, which is uh, you know required by a certain application to uh, make it r running right and all the ports which are uh, scheduled to nodes are working on that resource request so a pod will stay pending uh, you know if it demands like let's say more resource uh, more resource than it has been allocated uh, and this is the basic uh, like let's say uh, example you have a certain box uh, th let's say you have a you have a glass of water you you can pour the water as much as the uh, you know glass uh, till when the glass is filled till top so this is a uh, perfect case for insufficient resource you can only uh, deploy to the uh, you can only deploy to the part where you know your resource is not exceeding so th this is a perfect example for uh, insufficient resource so so in clusters that are like uh, unprovisioned or uh, no some experiencing expensing uh, excessive demand that that is the case for insufficient resource now i have a, a yaml configuration here so if you see that uh, we have a kind pod uh, we have our uh, container name my container and we are using just uh, the locally built image and we are requesting the cpu of uh, 10000 mb right so this is a whole lot of uh, memory for a simple configuration now this is the perfect example for insufficient uh, resources because again when you go ahead and apply this configuration and you will see that the pod will go in pending state and then when you, uh, you know, uh, try to debug the pod the uh, the pod which went in pending you will see the error uh, uh, the default scheduler is not working and uh, it has failed scheduling so it says that zero out of two nodes are available so that is insufficient cpu and we saw that we asked for a whole lot of uh, memory for for a single pod now uh, moving on to the next point is node or scheduling constraint so node limitation for pods can uh, you know indicate which node uh, they uh, let's say want to schedule on so a pod will stay on pending state uh, let's say if it does not have the resource uh, which it needs right so this is uh, again a perfect example for node and scheduling constraints so it needs to have the you know, required resource anything which you want to run needs to have some uh, you know sort of allocations to uh, make it uh, running right so in cluster with uh, like wide mix of nodes uh, there are various capabilities and this can you know prevalent issues so um, to handle the error in uh, node or scheduling constraints in kubernetes uh, you need to like specify the constraint uh, using node affinity and anti node affinity and that will see in the next slide uh, where i have the yaml configuration for this particular error um, and then once you have uh, identified the constraint uh, you can uh, the, the the pod will meet all meet all the uh, all the demands and then you can uh, you know maybe have this pod running so this is the yaml configuration uh, this is a quite different one from the previous one because uh, we have uh, node selected terms and uh, you know required uh, during scheduling in node uh, during execution so this is a particular use case which we are giving here um, but this again will throw an error because um, uh, again we are uh, not uh, you know, giving the right scheduling uh, information here so um, the last one or the let's say the mo most common error is image pull and like there are various various few errors such as uh, crash back loop of and all the others but uh, these are some of the common ones so in this if let's say if you're downloading container images from let's say contain container registry uh, it takes longer than uh, expected in in few uh, configurations and this is where you know that uh, you know you are having a networking or an image pull delay so let's say you have your application you have you, you have uh, applied the configuration and then you see that uh, okay the pods are pending and the application is still you know trying to retrieve the data from the link which you are requesting from so this has an example for uh, if you see here i, I have a uh, like a dedicated link for image here and it will not be able to drive all the you know, required details to bake this into the deployment stage so um, there are some custom uh, conditions as well, and these are like enabled by Captain. So 
Captain lets you like extend the definition of not uh, ready to deploy to a broader set of answers. So let's say just like uh, you you can uh, go for deployment doesn't mean that you should uh, obviously or you should always go for a deployment. Maybe there are some cases where you need to test few things, right? So now of course the technical narrow considerations like um, third party systems or um, infrastructure, they, they might not be ready, but um, more important is the broader, broader lens. So um, now you may be technically uh, you know, able to uh, deploy, but uh, the bigger question is, uh, you, should you go for uh, such deployments? Perhaps like uh, there are there are uh, marketing campaigns which are happening, you know, which cannot be uh, even potentially interrupted. So if you see th to the technical side here, uh, there are third party systems that are overloaded. Um, you know, data storage is unhealthy or temporary high failure rate on uh, dependent service. So, um, and then there is a whole lot, a different section of, uh, which is, you know, completely business centric. Uh, th like there are no humans ready to support. Um, in th there is a very, uh, let's say, short uh, maintenance window. Um, current ongoing P1 uh, marketing campaigns in progress, change freezes, um, too many unsolved tickets, call center too busy or uh, low stock and various others. So uh, the deployment uh, is a, perhaps the deployment is a promotion page for a new product, but uh, when you check the system, right? So you have um, any of the company, they make the deployment in order to, you know, uh, so that the users of the company can access the page or uh, you can see, you know, or use the product uh, which, which has been, uh, you know, created by the developers. So, uh, but you have like low stocks available there, n very uh, very uh, uh, low level stocks. Uh, so you know that uh, ordering will fail and um, uh, users will be frustrated, but you need to have a pre and post checks. So that was all about uh, that section. Now we'll see how our pine imports beneficial and how this is the main like section of our talk. So again, there are, uh, I've taken the three bro broader perspective on this. So first one is predictable scaling. Uh, second is imp uh, improved observability and then early detection of problems. So we will be uh, quicker on this uh, section because uh, we have a big demo to uh, be, uh, you know, displayed here. So first one is predictable scaling. So pending pods like may happen, uh, you know, during times of high demand, let's say there are various or a high number of pods being uh, deployed uh, for a single application. There might be resource constraint, you know, a single pod might be requesting or let's say all the pods are, might be requesting resource at the same time and some pod might not get the sufficient resource. So you need to make sure that you have a sufficient resource in order to make the uh, deployment uh, beforehand. Now, uh, due to Kubernetes ability to like automatically grow your cluster, uh, like uh, you know, by adding extra nodes whenever, let's say you are uh, making a deployment. So this is uh, like, th this, this is a case of rising workload and uh, this can be uh, advantages in, in some sections. So the auto scaling, which aids in like uh, preserving the performance and uh, you know, uh, the availability of the program. Moving on to the next point is uh, improved observability. Now, like you may learn more about the behavior of Kubernetes cluster by, you know, uh, maybe deploying an observability tool uh, in, in your deployment or in uh, you maybe using a uh, observability tool with your application. You will get all the data, all the matrices, and then you can maybe, uh, you know, see the future, uh, let's say, uh, you know, the future marks for the project or how it, how it has, uh, you know, been behaving in, in the past or what, you know, measures we can take in order to, uh, you know, scale it up. So now you can uh, grow your uh, cluster appropriately by using the right uh, observability matrices and uh, logs or traces, uh, let's say the three playlist, right? So for instance, like uh, you notice a pattern of pods, uh, you know, getting stuck in, uh, you know, resource constraint. So this is where uh, observability can help you. Now, the last point for this is early detection of uh, problems. So it, it's very like common. Uh, you can improve uh, if you have the problem with you 
at a uh, very early stage, right? So pending pods could like um, indicate an issue with your Kubernetes cluster. So uh, pod, my, pod uh, doesn't go to the pending state without any reason. There has to be some error which is you know causing it to uh, make it fall in the pending state. So like it can be lack of resources. Again, we have had a chat with uh, chat about the lacking resource uh, and like image pull difficulties and whatnot. Now uh, you can stop these problems uh, from like causing an application to go down if you have the right metrics to let's say or, or if you have that capability to debug uh, the part, right? So now understanding when pods uh, indicate problems is uh, let's say pods stuck in pending state for a long time. It, it can be a huge problem. Uh, group of pods like there are group of pods which are failing at the same time. Uh, this can indicate a huge problem to your deployment. Um, like you, you have the same reason for you know failing even after debugging the part or even after debugging the errors uh, a lot of times. But again, th that goes into the uh, let's say the errors. So this can be a, indi a problem indication for you. Now uh, they are pending even if uh, even if uh, you have like all the resources with you, all the conditions are met. But uh, if they are still uh, pending, this can be again a very big problem for your application. So. Uh, will be uh, how is like open source uh, tooling helping us here in order to let's say make this uh, pending issue uh, or how to how do we overcome these challenges? So, Captain does not like uh, only depend on particular GitOps tooling. It works with everything like uh, Argo CD, Flux, uh, GitLab, and whatnot. Now. KLT uh, was uh, ca uh, Captain Lifecycle Toolkit, which is now Captain uh, itself. So uh, what it does, it, it emits signal at every stage. So you have Kubernetes events, open telemetry matrices and traces, and it ensures your deployments are observable. So uh, there are some available steps, like which are applicable to both your workload and uh, applications. So there is a pre-deployment task, like, uh, you know, for, uh, Checking for dependent services, um, you know, checking if the cluster is ready for deployment or etc. Pre-deployment evaluation, uh, where you know you evaluate metrics before your uh, application gets deployed. Um, Post-deployment tasks such as uh, you know perform any action. Uh, you so this is properly based on TypeScript, so you can perform any action on uh, maybe your uh, return action on TypeScript. So now there are post-deployment uh, evaluations. So Captain helps you to check even before the deployment is made and also after the deployment in order to you know have that uh, correct scaling of your application now uh, this uh, the, the things we talked in the previous slide uh, is picturized here uh, if you see you make the deployment here using kubectl apply uh, minus f and uh, let's say we are deploying the complete application so there are uh, pre deployment evaluations which uh, again checks if enough cpu resources are available uh, there are workload pre-deployment tasks which uh, checks if uh, you know entry service is uh, uh, let's say uh, readable or not. And then uh, again, the same works for post-deployment task and post-deployment uh, uh, evaluations, which uh, you know it sends a no it sends a uh, let's say notification, a Slack notification or uh, something which can be helpful to the company or the folks who are you know using the application or maybe building the application. Now, uh, I'll just start with a uh, recorded part of the demo and then I'll continue with the live part. So, um, I'll try to explain uh, what all uh, I have been doing in this video. So, yeah, if, uh, if you see here, uh, I have just, uh, you know, started with creating a repository, um, not a repository directory. Uh, and I have uh, created a kind cluster here, right? So in order to make uh, like Captain work, you need to have a cluster, you need to have Docker installed in, in order to make the kind work, right? So what we are doing here is we have like uh, created the kind cluster and I have all the steps here in order to, you know, so that you can also follow along with me. And if, uh, let's say if you are lost in any, in any uh, let's say, uh, step. so. Now, what we are doing here is we are, uh, you know, making or uh, deploying the Helm charts of Captain. So this is basically, you know, installing Captain into your application, which helps you observe or you know get uh, data out of uh, uh, out of your application. 
So I have uh, made a, uh, no, I've deployed the KLT charts or uh, the captain here, made a update for the repo and then also created a namespace for captain lifecycle toolkit system. Moving on, um, we, after the, uh, the, let's say, this section is completed, we'll move to, uh, so it takes a little time to, you know, make Captain work or deploy Captain into your application. Now, we'll be creating, uh, you know, we'll be creating few configuration files in order to, you know, make the uh, complete Captain uh, work. So, as you see here, uh, We'll create a uh, cl cl uh, collector config YAML, which has uh, certain configurations, uh, you know, such as, uh, you know, uh, the namespace which we just created, Captain uh, Lifecycle Tools Toolkit System will be triggered here. Uh, we'll be having some open telemetry uh, data URL, and then we'll go ahead and apply this uh, configuration. So, I have created a, a file here with uh, with the YAML. Syntax and then I have I will just go ahead and apply it. So again, we'll uh, create a namespace for uh, you know our local demo namespace in order to uh, de demo the application which uh, which of which we'll be retrieving the data for. I, I have uh, just done this and applied for the namespace again. We'll again we'll do this for a uh, few of the configurations. Now this is this is the. Uh, demo application which we'll be using. So th this is the uh, Nginx, uh, uh, like we will we'll be using Nginx uh, here for this uh, like demo. And you see that we have a namespace here with a captain demo name, right? Um, so this part is done. Now we have, now it will take a little time to you know create this namespace because again uh, we are going to deploy the complete nginx controller and we'll uh, also we will see this in uh, you know we'll visit and check if our application is running or not after this is done so what we are doing now is uh, i'm checking the namespace for captain uh, like the demo which i have uh, which i will be working on so this is the namespace we see that is it is created now it is like uh, checking the app versions for uh, captain you see that uh, it's it's currently in the app deploy phase and again it will take some time to be completed so i'll just skip that part and you see that uh, it is completed now so we'll go ahead and uh, check that's uh, you know uh, the captain version is completed and then we'll see the wider version of it yep here so we have uh, name of uh, captain demo app version 0 0.0.1 0 .1. app name as uh, captain demo app uh, version as already specified phase is completed we have pre deployment status which is succeeded uh, pre deployment evaluations which are succeeded uh, and all the post and uh, post deployment evaluations and all the other things are succeeded as well so we have our version 1 uh, app deployed here and we'll be checking this uh, on uh, uh, like by visiting 8084, 8080 uh, localhost, right? So again, now we are we are uh, moving forward with the, you know, so this this part is uh, we will be using Dora metrics here in order to collect all the telemetric data and, you know, uh, use it for our own benefit. So this is the command uh, you, that is used for it. And then we'll visit uh, this localhost uh, uh, metrics part to see all the metrics that are being deployed, right? So moving on, uh, this, is, this is our application, Nginx application, which we did just deploy. And um, this is our Dora. Yep, so this is our Dora metrics part. So this is the metrics which we got from our first uh, deployment. Now moving on. Um, so now we'll uh, will not be only uh, you know using uh, just uh, Dora metrics. We have certain other tools to be used as well, such as Cert Manager, Jagger, um, and various others. So we are uh, going and deploying uh, with the first tool is Cert Manager, and again. I have skipped the dashboard or the localhost part uh, for this one because if I would have covered that, that would be a maybe a half and a half an hour uh, long demo. So we are using Cert Manager here. I have uh, already deployed the Cert Manager part. We are 
going for uh, Jagger deployment. Again, we'll create a config file for Jagger. Um, so again, these deployments take a little time. This is the reason I'm having the recorded demo for this section, uh, just so that I can cover the complete demo in half an hour. Um, we'll uh, create a namespace for observability, uh, you know, deploying of uh, Prometheus and Grafana and uh, other tools as well in order to get the correct data or, uh, you know, know your application in, in a better way. We have all these uh, things deployed. I'll just skip this part. Um, so we are now deploying the data source, right? So uh, it, it has a configuration for all the Grafana uh, parts. So what you can do is once you have reached this section, right, you can maybe create a dashboard using Grafana and uh, Prometheus uh, so that you have you know, pictorical uh, view of your uh, deployments and uh, data. So we did deploy Grafana here. Um, and you can see there are various other tools used uh, in deployment like Odigos, uh, you know, KLT Captain is there, Glue by Solo, uh, and Prometheus and uh, Redis and other uh, tools as well. So the observability part is uh, deployed. Again, we are, uh, so now what I did here is uh, we had the first version of uh, the application being deployed, right? Now what we are doing is we are changing the version to second part, like the we are upgrading a version from one to two uh, in order to like check if our data is uh, retrieved from the application or not and uh, to see if the post deployment check did work or not, right? So we see here that uh, uh, for now I have just changed the 0 0.0.2 .0 and haven't applied it yet. So I'm waiting for uh, the Prometheus part to uh, you know get deployed and once this section get deployed, I had changed this and applied uh, here for uh, that part. So uh, now again, it will take some time to you know get to the Captain app version and it's in the app deploy uh, state and that was completed. So this was uh, the part for uh, recorded demo. Now I'll continue live from here, okay? Um, So uh, in order to make uh, like the post deployment check, uh, like uh, to know if your application is working uh, good after the deployment, you need to have a webhook. So I have applied few uh, you know configurations uh, before uh, the talk. So this you see here is a webhook. Uh, like I have created a deployment for Redis, deployment for a webhook, and various services as well. So when you get the pods, you see that. There are a few pods created for uh, the namespace web webhook and uh, the container is uh, still in the creating phase. But again, it would have taken a time, so I did this beforehand. Now all these are created. We see uh, that it is up and running. Now um, moving on to the, I'll, I'll continue the demo part from here. So after this, what you have to do is, uh, you have to deploy certain uh, configurations again in order to uh, you know, see if the post deployment check is working or not. So for this, we again have a, uh, you know, the link, uh, a separate link working for this part. So I'll quickly go ahead and show you. So if we head towards, let's say, the link um, localhost 8084. So now we have the webhook uh, which we just uh, deployed here. Now you see we have a unique URL here. So this is uh, completely uh, you know unique to you uh, for your uh, personal deployments. Um, so what we'll do is, um, yeah. So now we will verify this uh, webhook sync uh, in order to check if the pause deployment, uh, you know. Were, were done or not. So we had, uh, we have to make a captain task definition uh, before, you know, uh, making or uh, verifying this. So we have localhost running. Now what we'll do is we'll add a post deployment task. Uh, so that is a configuration. Now we can name it anything, right? So what I'll be doing is I'll be um, heading back to 
my folder here. So I'm in my uh, demo folder, right? Yep. So let me just uh, quickly create a, let's name it as, uh, you know, check.yaml. Right. So we have, uh, we will be creating a configuration here. Now, so this is the configuration. Um, we have, as I just said, we have to create a captain task definition, which basically sends, uh, you know, it s says that, uh, you know, the post deployment check did work. So we are sending an event to, uh, for the captain demo and, uh, you know, we basically are just, uh, you know, pinging the current URL and this is the webhook link which we just deployed and uh, it's just an application which is uh, sending uh, captain send event or it will be just, uh, you know, sending this message. So we'll go ahead and uh, apply this. Uh, so we'll hit kubectl. Apply. Check. Yep. Um, sorry? Um, unique ID, sorry? I didn't get. No, no, the, that is not uh, needed. So what you have to do is you have to just create this file, right? And just uh, go ahead and uh, apply this manifest. So I think it's showing error validating uh, data app, app, API version not set. Um, maybe I did mess some uh, you know, API version in the YAML configuration. Let me just check. Okay, so we have <laughs> an I here. Hmm? So now we'll try again. Okay, so it is created. Um, so captain task definition uh, is created. Now, again, this is, uh, now we have to make another configuration in order to check if this, uh, you know, that that message was sent or not. So we'll go ahead and deploy another, uh, you know, uh, YAML configuration. So we'll name that as uh, check one. So I'll just go ahead, uh, check one uh, dot YAML. And I'll again just, you know, verify with this configuration. So we have another captain task uh, configuration in here which basically runs the previous uh, configuration. And uh, again, it is using the captain uh, demo namespace and it, it j just, uh, you know, uh, triggers the send event, which was previous configuration. And uh, so this is for the version one, right? But uh, remember we have already changed the part to version two. So we, uh, you can continue with version one as well, but uh, it's beneficial to, you know, have the getting started one and this uh, post deployment check uh, demo separately. But since I have version one here and I have already changed to version two, it will directly trigger to uh, version two. So I'll just uh, save this and apply it. Yeah, so this is again, uh, um, applied. Um, so now what we'll do is we'll see if the job is created or not. And, and I hope uh, you are not finding trouble to see the screen. Yep. Working fine. Okay. So again, we have to wait for a few uh, minutes in order to, you know, make this uh, job up and running. So till then maybe you know, I will like, I will explain you what is uh, what what all we have done in this captain task definition. So what we did is we did create uh, you know deploy web of sync uh, out of which we have uh, like out of which we will be making the post deployment check. Then uh, we did uh, go to the local host where we had a unique URL of ours. Then we did uh, you know verify uh, the web of sync web of sync here and. We did uh, make two configurations, check one, check two, 
uh, check one is uh, sending the message and uh, check two is uh, verifying if that message is sent or not. Uh, now we have this, um, let's, uh, let's go ahead and check if it's working. So it has completed, you see uh, it was zero out of one, now it's one out of one, so we have the job running. Um, now what we'll do is, uh, you remember the app which we deployed in the getting started section? There were a few labels in that. Now uh, we have a different set of labels which we'll be using in order to make that app work. So what we'll do is, um, we will uh, go to VI, um, our app, right? So this is the part I'm talking about. You see labels here. We are using just the Kubernetes derived labels for now, but we'll be using the captain labels now in order to make the pre and post deployment checks. So I'm going for um, uh, the the pre uh, the, the post deployment check. So I'll go ahead and you know add this section and I'll replace it from. So, yep. Okay, so uh, uh, as you see in the last line, I have post deployment task, which is send event, which we had in the check one configuration. Now I will go ahead and um, save it. And apply it. Okay, so intendation error. Uh, let me just quickly fix it. It should work here. Hmm. I guess demo bots are not with me today. Uh, but no worries. Um, we'll try again. OK, so it's showing indentation error, but uh, I'll just tell you what will happen is uh, you can just go ahead and uh, since we are very uh, very less time left, uh, you can just go ahead and uh, check on the web hook, web hook uh, sync which uh, we did just deploy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the URL. So what will what will happen is uh, you will see a different set of uh, you know captain uh, send event section here which says that okay your post deployment check did work. Pre-deployment check we have we have already in the getting started section, and uh, this was all about uh, the talk. And you you have all the I have like mentioned all the resources here. These are the captain docs. Uh, you know, maybe if you want to join the community, if you want to check out the uh, GitHub, you can go ahead and do this. Also, you can scan the QR code. Um, thank you. You did mention about post-deployment evaluation. I have a simple question around it. So is there any particular uh, duration uh, for which the post-deployment evaluation will run? Like I have seen in a lot of cases, once our pods are deployed, uh, it will show successful, but after some sort of time, like two minutes or three minutes, it will get failed. So in that scenario, uh, how will uh, Captain will help in that particular yes, scenario? As long as uh, you have Captain uh, deployed into your application, it will... Uh, it will do the post-evaluation. Yeah. All right, man. It will, you. like, if you want, you can manually take it as well. All right. Can we customize that uh, post-evaluation? Yeah, I just mentioned like that uh, you can customize your checks by using TypeScript. All right, fine. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay then.
I guess this is it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for uh, you know being at my first QCon talk. Looking forward to network with all you folks. <laughs>